What's up guys, XSR Detroit here with another video for you. Um, this is episode 3 in my winter mod series for the XSR 900. Today we're going to be looking at installing a new air filter, a new exhaust, and putting the freshly reflashed ECU from V Cycle Nut back in the bike. Um, I'm really excited about this. These are probably the only like real performance mods I'm going to do as far as like increasing engine power or anything. Um, I figured if I was going to go with getting a pipe, I better get the ECU reflash. I didn't want the bike to run lean, you know, I want it to run nice, I want it to sound nice, so I'm really pumped to get these upgrades on. I cannot wait to ride. It's been a long winter. It's, um, it's a gorgeous day today, too. It's like 50 degrees in Michigan, and I've seen so many bikes on the road, and I'm so jelly because, you know, I want to get out there, you know, soon, you know, it's, it'll, it'll happen soon. It's mid-February, we're almost to spring. And uh, when I do get on the road, my bike is going to be looking and sounding pretty beast. Um, I sent a bunch of stuff to the powder coaters. I haven't heard back from them yet. So uh, when I get that stuff back, I'll do a full like reinstall video for you guys. And then I'm going to do a final episode for the winter mod series where I just, you know, make sure the bike's road ready, you know, you know, adjust and lubricate my clutch, make sure, you know, I get some fresh oil in it, uh, brand new tires, just make sure that the bike is 100% uh, ready to go, ready and safe to ride, and God, I cannot wait to get back on the bike, but we're not riding today, we're doing some work, so let's grab some tools and uh, start taking stuff apart. So we're going to start with the air cleaner since it's pretty much the easiest mod we're going to be doing today. My bike's already taken apart so I don't have to uh, go through the entire process. But if your bike is completely you know, together right now, where you're going to want to start is by removing the seat. After the seat's off, you remove the two push pins at the front and back of the tank trim. Uh, and then remove the Torx fasteners, then the tank trim can come off. You'll take off your tank panels. At that point, you're gonna wanna remove uh, the fuel tank itself. Um, you have a fastener uh, at the back of the frame holding the tank in, and then you have some fasteners at the very top and front to remove. Uh, you also have to disconnect two breather uh, lines off of the tank and then you have an electrical connector to remove and the fuel line itself. Uh, after all that's disconnected, the tank should come right off. You'll see your ECU here. Um, you just un uh, disconnect the electrical connectors, lift up on the plastic tabs, and it'll slide right out. And you'll basically be at where I'm at right now, where I'm just looking at the air box. And removing the air box is, of course, no big deal. Um, so we're going to start by just popping these out, these electrical connectors out. And I will go grab a Phillips head screwdriver, and uh, we'll take it off. Here we have the stock filter, slides right up. Actually doesn't look bad, but I mean, my, only, my bike only has like, I think like just shy of 7,000 miles anyway, so I would expect it to look pretty good. Let's go grab the new filter out of the box. With the old filter removed, sliding in the new filter is super easy. I decided to go with Sprint for my filter. Once we have that back in, we'll pop the ECU in uh, that I got flashed from V-Cycle Nuts and we'll be ready to move on to the exhaust. Installing the Sprint filter is as easy as sliding it in, just like that. Make sure it's in the grooves, fits snug, and we're ready to put the top of the air box back on. First step for those ECU, let's get these connectors situated back on the gear, uh, air box. Now we're ready to slide that in. Pop those connectors. With the exhaust, we're going to start by removing the O2 sensor. I'm just going to pop this up right here, see if I can disconnect it first. Pop that up, make a little more room. There we go, disconnect that. If I lift 
everything here. Now we're ready to remove the O2 sensor itself. The O2 sensor is a 22 millimeter. Cool. Next step is going to be removing that bolt on the uh, brake side. It's a 12 millimeter. On the other side of the bike, the shifter side, you're gonna find the same bolt. Uh, it's a bit dark, hard to see. Um, that's it right there. It's also a 12 millimeter, so we're going to go ahead and remove that. At this point, we're ready to remove these nuts <laughs> from the engine. Uh, dead meme alert, uh, apparently. Uh, these are 12 millimeter. With the nuts removed from the engine, we are ready to lift the exhaust off the bike. That wasn't as graceful as I wanted, but hey, it worked. With the stock exhaust removed, we're ready to move on to installing the Termaginoni exhaust. Uh, as you can see, I've unwrapped all the pipes and I've kind of laid them out how they're going to be installed. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install each pipe, but I'm not going to tighten them up. We're going to put the collector on after that and make sure everything's fitting correctly. And then at that point, that's when we're going to tighten everything up. So this is the first pipe we're going to install. It has this spring flange right at the bottom. Uh, that's the only way I can really uh, show the difference between this one and, and there's another pipe that looks pretty much identical, but this is the one we're going to start out with. Got a new gasket. Now remember, we're only going to be like hand tightening these because we're going to need to adjust them before we torque. So for now, just put them on so the flange sits on the exhaust so the gasket isn't falling out and so in a little bit we'll be able to adjust it Last, we have the short curved pipe. With everything installed correctly, you should be having the pipes oriented like this, like an upside down triangle. So in the kit that you're going to get with this exhaust, we have some springs and some rubber boots. We're gonna put the rubber boots on the springs at this time before we put the collector onto the pipes. So Termogione gives you this spring puller with the kit. I found that it's easy enough to uh, basically get this like halfway on and then kind of like dig in. And of course, you want to be careful not to tear into the boot. I just want to pull up the spring. As you can see, so I'm just going to pull this up a little bit so I can get through. See, so now I have the spring hooked. So you're just gonna grab the rubber boot and pull it down. And this is, this is the easiest way. This is the way the instructions say to do it. Um, and as you can see, it goes on just fine. At this point, we're ready to install the collector. Um, you wanna make sure that the pipes aren't touching the oil pan. And you wanna make sure this breather tube is also not being touched by the exhaust. With the collector on the bike, we're now going to use the uh, string, uh, spring puller that it came with the kit and we're gonna attach the springs for the exhaust. It's a bit 
difficult to see, but on this end you'll have two springs to attach. There's one. There's two. So, this is the stock mounting hardware for the exhaust. What we're going to do is remove this washer. We're not going to use that. We have a smaller washer that was included with the kit. We are going to use this. And we're going to place it through this bracket included in the kit, like this. And then they included a, a, a lock nut to go on as well. So, let's go throw that on the bike. So, attach the bracket, fastener through, and put the nut on. The fastener is 12 millimeters and the nut is 13. The torque for this fastener is 20 newton meters. So we have this clip here. We need to attach it to the brackets. Uh, I figured I'd just do this now before we put the can on. At this point, we are ready to put the can on. Uh, you have one last spring here to use. So let's mount it, grab your spring puller, we'll get that spring on, and then we'll move on to installing the rest of the support for the actual can. spring installed we're ready to put the rubber in the bracket attach that and we can start torquing down the rest of the fasteners I had to kind of get this loose and then like kind of adjust it a little bit to fit correctly because it was kind of jetting out this way so um, you're gonna have to kind of just twist the exhaust around a lot or not a lot just a little bit just to get, make sure you're getting the proper fit because um, when I put it on initially, I'm like, damn, this thing looks wrong. So just a little adjustment, no big deal. We have our bracket for the exhaust. I'm just gonna gently slide it over. Here we have the mounting point that we're gonna be attaching to. We have this, uh, five millimeter Allen fastener. Um, so I was playing with this a little bit the other day and what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna put a little cardboard over this to protect it and I'm gonna use some needle nose pliers to hold the clamp um, together and then I'm gonna start the, uh, uh, the, the fastener by hand and then uh, go from there. I was having some trouble just like putting the fastener through and getting it to thread properly when I wasn't uh, using the pliers to hold the clamp together. So we're gonna try this out, um, see how it works. Nice. All right, now we got it started, so let's get that tightened up. Uh, as far as the mount back here, the last thing we have to do is install these Allen head fasteners. These are a three millimeter, and then we have a lock washer. So we have two spots. We have here and here where we're gonna install those. The lock nuts are eight mil. Next up we have the nuts. 
on the head. We're gonna tighten these up and torque them. So I'm just gonna hit these with the wrench. These are 12 mil. And you don't wanna like torque them. You wanna kinda go from one to the other and move the flange evenly. And then once you start feeling resistance, we're gonna actually apply the torque. Um, the torque is 20 newton meters. See, we're getting a little tight right there. I'm gonna back off. Tighten it up a little more. With the head nuts torqued, our last step is reinstalling the O2 sensor. Even though the tune I'm running pretty much deleted it, I don't have a plug for it. So we're just gonna, just gonna put that back. Now this step is of course optional, but I'm just gonna peel this off. It's not that I don't like the exhaust and the logo's okay, I just, I don't really like stickers or badges or anything on my bike in general, so I'm gonna take this off. I think it's cool. I think it looks nice with like kind of like an OEM look. Looks clean, I'll hit that with some. Oh, is that a scratch? Look at that. That's a strategically hidden scratch. What the hell? That's kind of annoying. What the fuck? Can you see this clearly on the camera? You see that right there? That's a scratch. They put the sticker over the scratch. That's kind of annoying. Huh. All right. Uh, all right. I guess it is what it is. Am I gonna really notice that? Yes. Am I gonna obsess over it? Yes. <laughs> but uh, that's gonna do it for today, boys. Winter Mod Series Episode 3, we got this exhaust put on. Despite that little, uh, little scuff on the can, kind of annoying, but you know what, whatever. It is what it is. Um, it looks cool. I wish I could fire the bike up for you guys right now, but uh, I don't have the gas tank on, and I still have some wiring to complete, which we're going to be doing in the next episode. We're going to get the tail frame back on, give you a little, little preview of that. We got the tail frame right here. It looks gorgeous. I'm so happy with how this turned out. Uh, I went to uh, Jeff's powder coating in Monroe. Uh, the work was fantastic. He's a total pro. I'm, I'm so happy with how this came out. And I also got the engine guards from Givi done in the same color, which, you know, um, some people really do not like the way these look on the bike, but uh, I think they're cool. I, I do. I, I would feel better if I had some engine protection. Um, you know, powder coating them gold is going to bring a lot of attention to it. But you know what? I think it's a cool look. So in the next episode, we'll be installing the tail frame. We're going to be doing engine guards. I got lots of powder coated stuff to put back on. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the bike's going to be probably 90% there. I got some tires on the way. I got me a, a front stand for the front wheel. So the wheels will be coming off, but the bike will be mostly assembled at that point. I'm going to, I bought some, um, <clears throat> Michelin road fives, which I've heard a lot of great things about. So I'm really looking forward to it. As you can see, this wheel is pretty done. I mean, it's not, I mean, you got some cord showing through there personally. Uh, if I see cord, I, I'm not riding on it, man. It's just, I don't think it's safe. But, hey, I've seen worse. I've seen worse on the road. So, look at the shape of that. Yeah, that's done. All right, boys. Thank you for checking out the, uh, the video. If you have any questions, please sound off in the comments section. If you like what I do, please throw me a like. Uh, you know, hit the subscribe bell. You, you guys have heard this a thousand times. You know the deal. But thank you, as always, for checking it out. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Peace.